In this episode, I will travel around the Danish island of Bornholm, located in the Baltic Sea. I feel like a kid again. <laughs> Are they okay? Yeah, perfect. It's just a tiny little berry, but it changed your life. The lamb graze freely all along the beaches and are able to eat all of the herbs and junipers and whatever they want out here. If you're looking for a destination to travel to that can boast with white sandy beaches, rocky shorelines and food that will put a smile to your face, then you should not miss this gem. As many Bornholm tourists do, I'm checking in at one of the many seaside hotels. If you want deluxe accommodation and also a culinary experience, Stammers Halle Bell Hotel is the place to go to. Wow. <laughs> so it's, it's a nice view, huh? It is absolutely stunning. Yeah. Absolutely stunning. Hello! Oh, this is nice. Yeah, a bit of coffee morning. in the sun. <laughs> I, I was here, was it three years ago? Yeah. And visited Bornholm. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised then to see how much has happened since the last time I'd been here. But now, three years later, it seems like a lot has happened already. Why, why is that? It's not only the two or three best restaurants that's, that has been raised. It's also the bottom, le bottom level. Yeah. Every, everyone has been a little bit higher. It seems like that. Yeah. Like, like everybody's sort of yeah. muscled yeah. up and yeah. it's, it's coming yeah. together. Yeah. It means that before you, you, you bought something by the grocery, uh, now you make it your own. You have, you have, uh, you're proud of your product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but it also means that the real heroes on Bornholm, it's, it's not the restaurants, it, it's not the chefs, it's not the owners. It's the producers. The, the guy who makes the, the vegetable, we call him in the morning at 10, he picks it up at 12 and we serve it at, at, at 18 or 6, 6 o'clock. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's wonderful. It's every restaurateur's or, or chef's mm -hmm. dream to yeah. have it like that. Yeah, yeah. We always talk about love. Mm -hmm. You can taste the love on the plate. Mm -hmm. And here it's, it's very, it's difficult not to be in love, actually. <laughs> The philosophy amongst the people of Bornholm when it comes to sustainability has created the platform for many producers and entrepreneurs to get established on the island. My journey starts at Bornholm's food culture house, Garden, and the agricultural museum, Melstegård. It's a completely different world in here. Yeah, it is. It seems like everything here is working. Everything is working. It's a, it's a working farm, so we have uh, lots of animals, obviously also horses. They need water. Here life is sort of preserved. This is just before the Industrial Revolution, at least in Denmark, and so everything you'll, you'll see here and also all of the artifacts in the, in the old um, uh, museum part of the, of the Agricultural Museum is from that period. This is a farm, and that's where you produce everything that you use for food. But you've also taken this a bit further. You've combined this with the gastronomical feature of it as well. Sure. I have the pleasure of, uh, of running the, the new Food and Culture House. And the Food and Culture House wouldn't be anything on Bornholm if it wasn't for this place, because it's, it's looking back at what we're sort of, the, inher the heritage, the, the culinary heritage that we have on Bornholm, we can work with that in the modern context in a new house. But if you were to mention one or two other places, one shouldn't miss. Svanike, Bruckhus. Svanike, the brewery. The brewery, yeah. And the chocolate place, Castle. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Tell me how you like them. It's great. 20, 20 grams. Are they okay? Perfect. See? I feel like a kid again. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had this stuff with ice cream and licorice and stuff? It's good, huh? <laughs> I'll be back for more of this. Hello, hello. <laughs> we uh, smoke traditionally way here, like we, we've done in the old times. So here they are. Wow, 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 look at that. Traditional smoke clearings. Down here, we are Denmark's oldest smoke family. I'll be the fifth generation. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about now. That's how it should be. This is the way it's yeah. supposed to be. Yeah. 
Bornholm's breathtaking landscape is perfect for all kinds of outdoor activities, so I've decided to try some rock climbing at the Opal Lake, which is an old quarry. So, which wall are we climbing? Uh, we're climbing this wall right here. Okay, good, cool. Yeah, I need some, uh, some gear as well, yes. right? That we have right over here. Harness is on. Yes, helmet is on. Do a check, make sure everything is how it should be, yeah. and it is. Then let's go climb. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you at the top. It's fun. Yeah, I made it. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and the view is absolutely spectacular from here. What was that called up there? That's uh, Hammers House, an old uh, medieval castle. It's nicely situated up yeah, there. Yeah, it huh? is. Yeah. Oh, that was a great experience. That's Thank you, guys. Now I'm feeling a bit thirsty. I'm meeting up with an old friend of mine, brewmaster Jan Paul in Svenike. Jan Paul is utilizing the sunny island's solar energy to brew his beer. We are converting more and more of our, um, our beer into organic with the aim of converting 100%. We've just installed solar panels on the roof of our brewery. They give 110 uh, kilowatt. Uh, the sun is shining like today, yeah. which is quite nice. Um, and yeah, stuff <laughs> yes, like that. Yes, it is quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great to be able to harness that energy and use that in your brewery. It's, yeah, uh, it's sure. fantastic. Should I pour it for you? Absolutely, please. See, it's a bit hazy. This is just, uh, well, kind of, you know, New England pale ale kind of inspired. Oh, that is nice. Hmm. And harmless to your surroundings. Absolutely no alcohol in there. So. It's alcohol free, 100%. Well, there is, but yeah, there is a bit in there, but it is uh, not something that will influence you. This is actually under 0 0.5. Okay. So not even a baby would feel anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a good beer. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> alcohol or no alcohol, that's a good beer. Period. What's the secret to uh, to an alcohol? -free well, the beer? idea with this is not removing alcohol from a pre-brewed beer. I'm just simply fermenting this without the alcohol being formed. So what's normally fermentable for any uh, brewery yeast will not be fermentable for this particular yeast strain. Okay, so that's so this the is, secret. This is it's, the secret. It's this particular strand of yeast that you're yeah. using. Yes, exactly. This is a New England style. Yeah, you could you could call this a New England style um, pale ale. Really, it is a pale ale. It has the American hops. It has the protein profile that makes it makes it hazy, mm -hmm. like it is. It is, uh, and the haziness comes from? From protein, mostly. Um, so protein particles just floating around, basically. Yes, exactly. I would be happy to drink this instead of a, an alcohol beer. Uh, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a beer I, I, I particularly enjoy when driving my car. Yeah. Uh, because you can really drink, and even you, you pass by the police, you can, this is, you can drive your car and, yeah. and, and look like you're drinking normal beer. And nothing Ooh, happens. It's tight. Yeah. Back in 2008, Camila and Mats decided to, well, leave the life that they knew behind them in Copenhagen and move out here instead. And they did so in 2010. Now they've got a beautiful farm down here and they grow sea buckthorn and make all kinds of crazy stuff with it. So when did you plant all of this? Uh, 2010. And the first row here is the male uh, bushes. Because you Cause need it's, male, it's male and, and female. female. Mm. Exactly, yeah. Mm. It's just a tiny little berry, but it obviously changed your life. It did, it yeah. did. And, and I mean, I think also the more we uh, dived into the, the pos possibilities with the berry, 
also the more in love we fell. I mean, if it was strawberries, it would be now. Yes. And that would be fantastic. But yeah. in two weeks' time, it will be finished. True. With Seaboxon, we can divide it into so many different uh, parts, both the berries, uh, we use the shells to dry, and then we use the juice for marmalade and, and, and juice, and we squeeze oil. We press oil from the nut, which uh, has got some fantastic uh, abilities for skincare. I've heard that one of these little ones, once they're ripe, yeah. contain the same amount of vitamin C as, as an orange. Yeah, that's true. And it is true. It is true. So one of these a day yeah. is going to keep you, mm -hmm. keep we, you healthy. We send a branch with orange berries with our daughter to the school, and they are really sour mm -hmm. when they are orange and mature. Mm -hmm. Teacher said, eat three each, and you will not be ill this uh, autumn. <laughs> and they did. And they did. Yeah. Hello, Matt. Hello. How are you doing? Welcome. Thanks. I've heard so many things that you can do with these berries, so um, yeah. I, I just really want to dig into it. But what was the first product that you made? This one, the marmalade. And that's without the skin and without the knot that inside the, the berry. And you, you see the color. It's beautiful. This is what happens when, when somebody who, who has a lot of genuine interest in a product, mm -hmm. listens to the best, goes home, tries, experiments, and comes out with perfection. This is absolutely incredible. So this is the pure juice, without water, without sugar. In, in this little cup that I'm holding now, how many berries would this be, roughly? 10 to 20. 10 to 20. Yeah. So in, in vitamin C, that's equivalent to roughly 20 oranges. So cold, no more. I'm never going to get sick again. This would work in food so well. Mm. Bornholm really has its own terroir, which gives the produce here its unique and special flavor. When I was here three years ago, a clear goal was set for Bornholm, that in the future, this place was going to be a gastronomical force to count with. And I would say that now, three years later, that goal has been reached. It's every fisherman, every farmer, every chef, every restaurateur that has raised the level here to new heights. Together, they've set a new standard for Bornholm. So if you're looking for a destination to travel to that can boast with white sandy beaches, rocky shorelines, and maybe even more sun than you can handle, and food that will put a smile to your face, then you should not miss this gem.